Good morning. Today is June 3rd, 2020, and this is the Morning Breach with Scott Davis. Right now, across central Pennsylvania, severe thunderstorms are heading through. And that made me think of, well, business continuity. Yes, I know, but as PPL is currently registering over 600 customers without power, this storm and the high winds should have you questioning the exact same thing. So ultimately, what runs your business? Well, chances are it's an internet connection. And first you have to ask yourself, what would an extended internet outage do to your business? Can your business live without internet for 15 minutes, a couple hours, or a couple days? Now in today's world, Short of a large-scale disaster like a tornado, hurricane, or flood, chances are you may at most lose internet connectivity for a day or two. But your business may not be able to afford that. You can look at adding a cellular hotspot modem to your location, which works similar to putting your phone in hotspot mode. But before you do this, you have to have the infrastructure that can support it. And you also need to disable some functionality. Uh, so when you're on hotspot mode, you wanna disable video conferencing, video audio streaming, online games, you know, Facebook use, non-essential business purposes really. So that when you're using the network, you're not straining it. So if, you're, if that's the route then it's worth investigating, make sure you consider your phones. If they're voice over IP, remember to take them into consideration as well as they use data to transmit. So we lost internet, but it's on the same lines as the electric. So what good is internet without power? Again, it's a question of what can your business stomach with downtime? <coughs> Excuse me. You should have a battery backup in your network infrastructure and servers that can power the core for roughly at least four hours. You need to ensure that your IT team can get on site and do emergency power downs for outages greater than that. And let's be honest, if it's three o'clock in the morning, 15 minutes won't cut it. Now you can place workstation UPS battery backups for workstations, but likely most of your essential staff today is already using laptops or mobile devices which have batteries that at the very worst case is gonna last them a few hours. Now, if business is critical, your building should have a backup generator on it. And you need to ensure that the network infrastructure and servers are on that circuit and that the battery backup that's being used is rated for a generator. So just because you have a generator, you still need a battery backup. Now, when all heck breaks loose, that's when you need solid cloud-based backups. I personally really like the job that Datto does with its BDR solution, but there's many others out there. So you can power on your server infrastructure from an appliance or in the cloud when you need it most. Uh, like I said, Datto is not the only player here, but it is a leader in the field. Now, if you're in a prone area, say you're located on the Gulf Coast in Florida, hurricanes, you know, et cetera, I would re recommend considering virtual desktop structure. But here's your fair share warning. When you make this transition, make sure you're working with the right IT team because most of them are guessing and either don't properly secure it or they can't even properly set it up, which then leads to outages and downtime. And you will feel stuck because at this point, now that IT vendor is housing your everything and it's where all of your stuff is. It's your everything. Business continuity is just one aspect of what a good IT team brings to you. Security, service, and the trust that they see you as a partner and not as a client are also key. Now my advice, regardless of who you use, is to get a third party review completed on your network. I personally call them state of IT documents for the partners that I work with. Well, the thunderstorm's over and my network stayed online. So let's look at the world of security threats. First up, the Revel Ransomware Gang, uh, or Revel Ransomware Group, whatever you wanna call it, has begun to auction data belonging to Madonna from the Grumman, Shire, Misalis, and Sachs law firm in New York City. 
this Rebel Ransom gang, uh, through that breach, has already announced that they have a trove of data uh, regards to President Trump. Uh, they have planned to auction separately or sell to the highest bidder, pretty much. Microsoft's own GitHub security team has issued a warning after 26 open source projects using a development called NetBeans has been compromised. Overall, this is a low risk for the average user, as GitHub is a repository for computer programmers and developers to place their code as they work on it and collaborate on. Um, but, that, but it means that hackers are trying to trick a demographic that typically has elevated access and usually consider themselves to be tech savvy. So just an area to be concerned if you're in that tech group and you use GitHub. It appears the Maze Ransomware group is making friends, as a new data leak appeared from the group appears to be from the ransomware operation known as LockBit. Now, LockBit is a ransomware as a service, or RAS, and Maze has confirmed to bleepingcomputer.com that they are sharing experience and their data leak platform with LockBit, and they will be adding another ransomware operation here soon. So this collaborative or cartel, cartel, if you will, is actually going to get more intelligent as they combine resources and what is working and what's not. But to close out today, the group that sponsored the CCPA is pushing for an even more stringent privacy bill, the California Privacy Rights Act, or CPRA, which the group claims to have secured the ballots needed to place it on the November 2020 ballot. So a quick look at it creates new sensitive personal information category um, covering you know, your health information, biometrics, et cetera. Uh, a section that covers children's data, which is big with how all these schools very quickly have uh, moved to online learning. It establishes an enforcement arm. It allows Californians the right to correct data that is in the web and even updates it with more breach liability. So it's something that obviously we're going to pay attention to. As always, if you've learned something new by watching this, please take a few seconds and like and share the video. If you want to see more episodes of The Morning Breach, please follow, connect, subscribe, whatever it is. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning.